once upon a time, I made a medieval strawberry dress. Basically, the dress is a strawberry, and it's one of my favorite medieval dresses that I've ever made. If you haven't seen the videos on making the strawberry dress, I'll link those to you so you can go watch them. I wore this dress to a medieval camping event last year called Gulf Wars, and while I was there, I met a group of amazing ladies who were dressed up as German Renaissance My Little Ponies. And so it was decided that the next time we came to Gulf Wars this year, we would all go as medieval fruits. So since I already had a strawberry dress, I decided I have to make a banana costume for my boyfriend. So we did a rough sketch of what we wanted the banana costume to look like. It's going to be 15th century like mine, so it'll match. And I'm using a yellow linen fabric to make this. So this is basically a hoopland, which is a standard 15th century garment. The pattern for this particular hoopland is really simple. It's basically just fitted at the shoulders and the armhole, and then it just flares out as long as I want it to be. If you want some more information on drafting multiple hoopalon patterns, I do have a PDF tutorial that I will link for you. I'll also link in the description some women's hoopalon videos that I have on my channel. So we have the same pieces front and back, just the front is cut a little bit lower for the neckline. That's really a simple pattern for this particular one. You could kind of pattern it by tracing out like a t-shirt or something that you like for the shoulders and then flaring it. We'll be doing something extra with this one to really give it some appeal. I also cut out a hood from the same yellow linen. This is just really a very basic hood shape, a little bit pointed in the back. To make the hood, I sewed together the back section and the front section, and I also created another one of these hood pieces as the lining in a sort of off-white linen. So then I sewed the lining and the outer together. So I'm doing basically like a bag lining, which is the simplest way to line it. So turning that right side out after I've clipped the corners and it's looking really, really nice. I like it. So I finished off the hood by adding buttons and buttonholes to the front of it. Then I moved on to the sleeves for the hoopaland, which are shaped like this. Next up, I need to cut up the sleeve pieces so that they become a peel. So I decided to cut each sleeve into six pieces. So that means three per side. So what I'm doing here is measuring out the sleeve. So first in half, and then each half is going to become three pieces. So I'm measuring that out at the lower edge of the sleeve first, and then I need that to go up into the sleeve at basically the same angle as the whole sleeve. So then I'm coming up to where I want the top of the cut to be, and I'm doing the same exact thing. So I'm finding the middle of the sleeve there, and then I'm dividing each half into three pieces. So, so I have the whole sleeve marked out as six pieces at the bottom, and I also have it marked in the same six pieces toward the top where I want the ends or the tops of the cuts to go. To form the cuts, I started by just cutting a straight line. So I've actually traced a straight line so I could cut along it using that yardstick that's laying beside me over there. So I'm cutting these lines from the lower to the upper points that I've marked on the sleeve. And then after that, I'm marking the center of each one of those little flaps or peel pieces that I've created and then I'm making sort of like a little point at the center. So I'm shaping these into nice little peel sections. I did that first on one side and then I folded it in half so that I can make the other side match it perfectly. And now we get to the body pieces of the hoopalond. So I figured out about how far up into the body I wanted these cuts or peel pieces to go. And so I've marked a pin up there to kind of get me, this is the top. And then at the bottom, I'm marking off my seam allowance there at the sides. And then I'm measuring 
just like I did with the sleeves, but this time I'm measuring four pieces per body piece. So that's actually a little bit easier to divide up because you divide the whole thing in half and then you divide each of those in half. So easy peasy if you're looking to do something like this, half it, half it again. Just like on the sleeves, I measured the same thing at the top of where I wanted the cuts, drew out straight lines using my yardstick, and then cut those up. And then after cutting them out, I shaped them into peel pieces just like I did with the sleeves. So next we're going to start sewing the body of the hoopalon together. I started by sewing the front two pieces and the back two pieces. So I'm also sewing the side seams there from basically the top of those cuts to the top of the seam. And at the front I'm leaving a little space there so it can have a keyhole neck opening. The same thing for the sleeves, I sewed up that underarm seam, but I stopped where I want the top of the peel pieces to start. Then I took the lining, which off camera I cut exactly the same as the other body and sleeve pieces, and I've sewn the lining to the outside material right sides together all the way around those peel pieces. To turn the garment right side out, it's important to clip the corners. And then I pulled all of those peel pieces through so that they are right side out. This is probably the part of the process for the banana costume that took the longest amount of time, as there are quite a few peel pieces. So here's the body of the hoopalond sewn with all of those little lined flaps really adds some appeal. After I sewed the body and the sleeves to their linings, I attached the sleeves onto the arm size. I do also have the neckline here sewn as a bag lining as well. And that's really it for the process. So this is basically a basic hoopalond design. However, the difference is that I've cut all of these peel pieces into it, and then I did the lining sewing those first so that I could have all those nice clean edges there. Now trying this costume on, one important part is getting that hood to stand up so it can be like the top of a banana. So we took some of the scraps of fabric and used that to stuff it in there. You also can wear this with or without a belt. You'll see hoopalons worn both ways in period depictions. The fact that this hoopalon is a banana is certainly a little bit of a fantasy to go with my strawberry dress, but just like how the strawberry dress is taken from something in period that's very similar, we also see hoopalons in period with a lot of these dagged edges. I've simply exaggerated it. So the strawberry and the banana go together very well. And don't forget to bring your peanut butter jelly and a baseball bat. I really love both the strawberry dress and the banana costume. And I'd like to know from you, what is your favorite fruit? Or what fruit would you like to dress up as if you could be a fruit? As always, you can find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me continue creating amazing content. I'd also like to thank my boyfriend for being a banana. I'd also like to thank all of the amazing people who were the Fruits Basket group with us. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing, magical day, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Peanut butter jelly, 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 and a baseball bat. <laughs>